could actually yeah. turn off the recording for now if you want, Sarah. Okay. okay, this is Town of Broughton, RTM Public Works Committee meeting. In attendance is uh, <clears throat> how do you spell the last name again? Uh, it's G I B B S. Okay. Emma Gibbs. Yes. Roscoe Merritt. Gary Wells. And we have a quorum. Yes, ma'am. I'll put in the absent later, also present. Sorry. <laughs> I think it's B A R G E. R O V A X. We'll correct that. Um, Red line under. Oh, I've got a full house here. The chair back here. I don't know why, Stacy. <coughs> EY. EY. How do you spell the last name again? O H L M A N N. H L M A N N. Yep, the second word is L I C H. Uh, uh, and who else have we got here? Amanda Gallagher. A M A N D A G A L L A C H R. That's about it. Okay. Uh, six oh four. We we'll call that order. Hmm? Six oh four. I'm with six oh four. We we'll yeah. call that to order. Yeah. Probably going to start with uh, the city. No. Okay. Okay. How do you want us to present? I mean, uh, do you want us? Do you do we need to present fully like we did to the council, or do you want a truncated, uh, uh, a truncated uh, overview, or do you just want me to say that it's been approved by the council? No. So you're aware, and Representative Wells, I think. <clears throat> all might already know this the city of Groton um, highway budget per state charter is approved by the town council the RTM has to say yes we agree with that but if we said no we don't agree with that it really doesn't change anything because um, per the special order special so there's a special act. act thank you special act we don't really have a say the RTM does not really have a say so it's really up to you guys on how much you want the city to explain their budget, we really just, it, for lack of better terms, we rubber stamp this one because we don't have any other choice. Uh, I'll ask you and I'll ask Gary, do we want to follow the recommendation? And this is per state charter. We really have no say in this. So that what goes it? for all three. You know, so we're going to go one at a time. 
And uh, this is for City of Groton, Gary. Yeah, I know. And uh, uh, anybody know what page less, it's on? 177. Yeah, we more or less can't really to make any move on it. Need somebody to move the number. That's by state charter, and the council has approved it. If the committee wishes, they can just uh, pass on it, and then we'll move on. So I'll move the number. Is that what I say? Okay. Yeah. Unless the mayor has something he wants to uh, tell us about it. No, he's pretty much in line with what the council okayed. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just. You want to explain, like, I would recommend you, you move a number, you have it seconded, and yeah, then, the and then okay. open the floor for discussion, and then let the mayor and Director Robars at least give a brief explanation sure. of what, what the changes are. Okay, what, what number are you moving? Uh, I'm moving. I didn't the, get that. So the proposed uh, number of let's see, on page one seventy seven, this guy, right? Two seven seven one one nine six. Is that the correct number, Keith? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Should approve. Did you say two seven seven or two seven one? Uh, 2771. 2771, yes, ma'am. Yes. We have a second on this motion. I'll second it. Any discussion? Oh, yeah, maybe just I'm sure. Let me let me for those of you that are not familiar with this, this is an unusual account. Uh, in 1903, there was a special act that created the borough. In 1964, there was a special act that created the city and continued on the information. And in 1977, a special act was updated to basically say that the town is required provide those monies that are necessary and proper for the making and repairing of roads that are town roads in the city of Grotten. Okay. So that's this. And this is an all-encompassing budget. So there's two things. One, there's CIPs contained in it, and it is a burdened budget or a loaded budget. So many of the budgets that you see from a town are O&M budgets, operating and maintenance budgets. Ours includes uh, pension, insurance, OPEB, all that, all those non-departmentals. So <clears throat> I'll read you the letter that I sent to John Burt, town manager. Attached, please find the city of Groton highway, this is, oh yeah, highway budget for FYE 2024. This year we have an increase of 6.09% in the highway operating budget and 1.3% increase in the total highway budget. Highlights in the budget include the operating budget has an overall increase 6.09%. This is reflected in the increases in personnel costs, materials, and supplies, the software program for the asset infrastructure. The capital requests are as follows replace a 2005 Mason dump truck, replace a 1983 compressor, paving of South Prospect Street, Beach Bond Road, engineering and construction, and traffic calming on Eastern Point Road. The city has once again prepared their budget in accordance with the town's budget practices so they can be more readily compared to the town's budget. We are submitting along with our budget backup documents which were requested by the town. One document contains the worksheets which detail the cost included in both personnel services and operating expenses. <clears throat> Excuse me. We are also submitting for informational purposes a copy of the city's capital improvement plan or FYE 2024 through 2029 as it relates to the highway. Please do not hesitate to contact me if you have any questions. Sincerely, Keith Hedrick. So this is here, but if you go back into tabs A and B, if you go to tab A, the very first part of that I think is police and then highway, is that police first? No, highway That's first. highway, okay. So highway is first. 
and that's all the backup material that I was referencing, oh, okay. referencing here. So should you desire to, to look at the backup material, uh, it is in there. So is, does that give you enough background on this, uh, this I just, account? I just need the final figure for 1090. You had that before. Two million seven hundred seventy-one thousand one nine six. Yes, that's the number. Yeah, I, I was just going to record that. You want to write it down? Uh, we, or, I, I, I can. You have it in your motion, do you? Yeah. 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 Yes. Um. So the one point four percent is just the the one point three percent for the total total overall. Including the capital. That includes the capital. Okay, that's yep. the extra point one percent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, I'm fine with it. Uh Gary. Uh, the mayor sounds happy. I I was just wondering, is there anything uh that you would like to have that you that's not there? Well, <laughs> uh Representative Wells. Once it's passed by the council, nothing can be done by the RTM. Several years ago, there was an issue. Matter of fact, I might have been on the RTM then when um, the RTM tried to add money to the account and could not. So it's the way that the state statute is, statute is set up. Uh, <clears throat> The council approves it, and council has approved what we requested. So I, yes. we're we're happy. We can change the town manager's number. We can't change the council's number. Basically, no. I wasn't suggesting we add money to the account. I just wanted to know: it's, it's, are there things he left out that he'd like to do maybe next year? Yeah. Or I I wouldn't know where to get the money from, anyways. If we wanted to add it, <laughs> no, not not for not for this account. I mean. Every year, I mean, we do have a five-year and actually further capital plan, but we do that by year, and that, and that includes uh, vehicle maintenance and purchasing, and also uh, AV. So, and that's not that's not unlike what the town does. Okay, so we're. Approving of a number of two million seven hundred and seventy one thousand one hundred and ninety six dollars. Yes. Gary? Yes. Yeah, that's fine with me. Okay. We have to go, right? Yes. <laughs> I was yes, yes. <laughs> that passes three to zero to zero. Okay. Moving on. Right, we're out here. What's up? Thank you very much. Yeah. Nice Thank meeting you. you. I'm Emma. I'm, I'm, I'm Keith Hedrick. Okay. You know what? You still have three lights. Oh, three lights. Okay. The next on yours is item 10904. That's, That's true. That's yeah, but you don't have any. I don't have it. No, I don't think we have anything on that, do we? That's your next item. Well, street lights. Your next street budget lights. item. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't get all the paperwork appropriate. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one I one? was looking for. One zero nine zero four. Yeah. In the amount of one hundred thirteen thousand eight hundred forty-eight dollars. Yeah. So here we go with street lighting. One zero nine. Where's zero the breakdown? Four. Four. It's on one side. Well, that one comes from the seven. town. That's the. The cost of the lights operating in the city of Grand. Okay. I was just wondering what the increase was from last year, I guess. Is that that, is that on there? It may be on oh, there. Okay. Uh, okay. $2,000. The actual for last, for 2022 $2, was 103000 The adjusted for 2023, I should put on my glasses, was 104504 And the estimate for 2023 would be $11,614. Uh, Grant utilities electric price increases. Right. That's true. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, that is true. Because electricity is going up. I mean, it's going up across the state, well, across country, but across the state. Generation. Yeah. 
for us to generate. So there's no new lights for. Uh, I'm considering cost increases, if that's the proper. Right. Yeah. So I have to motion to. What do I say? I'd like to make a motion to approve $113,848. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve $113,848. Second. Uh, any further discussion on this? This is for normal operating costs and increases in operation. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Three in favor, zero, zero. Okay, that's that. I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank 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 Oh, when I'm not busy, but that's after I retire. <laughs> okay, we'll do it at five Thank you. Yes, sir. So, do we do the police? No. 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 Oh, under the police. Uh, under the police. Okay. That's public safety. Sure, yeah. that makes yeah. sense. Okay. That's next Thursday. I apologize. Last year at the the public works committee meeting, I was in the hospital having my baby. So, right, uh, I remember uh, that. Oh yeah. yeah. So you're like, mm, no. Okay. <laughs> uh, account number one zero nine one on page one seventy nine. Yeah, one zero nine one one. Yes. Yeah, the the one zero nine one is a heading, uh, and then your area oh, is see. added on afterwards in the different parts thereof. So, and I think we will only be hitting on one zero nine one one and one zero nine one two. I can find that here nine one highway maintenance and street lighting. Okay. And do you have a figure that was approved by the council? We do. Um, it was uh, two hundred and sixty thousand five hundred for both items. No, that is just for the roads. The street lighting is okay, the same as for the city. That is that's done for the roads. Okay. Separately by town of Groton. Okay, for Groton Long Point, we have account number 1091. We have for the roads is $260,500. Do so I have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion. Do I have a second? Yeah. Okay. Any discussion on this? Um, I guess maybe this, a quick summary of this was the council's number, I believe. Correct. Okay. I mean, if you'd like, I can read the letter that we submitted to yeah, if you, the council. Do you have any input you wish? Page 66 under tab A. Uh, however, however you would like us to proceed, I'm happy to read it and I can skip the little excerpt from the state uh, charter, which I'm to make a point, I'm in the opinion of the council's number, which I can't change. And we can discuss if you wish. You can change it. You can reduce it or you can make a recommendation to reduce well, recommendation, it. You yeah. can't go above it. I'm not suggesting no. that. Yeah. I'm just no, yeah, I understand okay. that one, but uh I'm in I'm in favor of that number. Uh, do you have any discussion you wish to explain actually in brief what it is? Um, I think the one change this year 
from last year is that we did not ask for a separate CIP for paving. We are covering that as part of our operating budget. Mm -hmm. um, the increase is only, I think, 3%. Yep. Um, Glenn has, knows the detail better than I do because. Yeah, on the paving side, we've been working closely with the town of Groton to get quotes. So the costs are backed up by quotes to the town of Groton. The real driver in the budget this year, which is only $6,000, $6,500 more than last year, is we're up for contract renewal on our uh, snow and ice removal. And, you know, due to inflation, we anticipate that probably increasing a little. So that was the only impact really to the budget for the uh, fiscal year 24. But you don't know how much it'll go up? No. Okay. I'd like it to be like this year where it doesn't snow. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true. This is New England stick around. Yeah, yeah, right. For your snow and ice removal, is it a flat fee for the year or is it? If it snows, they come in flat for you. Okay. They bills us monthly. So whether it snows or not is irrelevant. You just get charged. Okay. What's the current contract? It's the current contract, yes. Okay. You probably won't get to any contracts until way after the budget's settled. Yeah, probably not to the late summertime. So you just all you can do is really speculate. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So when it goes out to competitive bid. Mm -hmm. So if it didn't go up as much as you are budgeting, then what? happens with the money if there's extra yeah we look at the wherever the budget line items needed maybe do a little bit more paving if we can get it we have okay. our paving is done on a priority system mm -hmm. so we only pick two or three segments per year um yeah we're kind of working down a priority list so if we can squeeze in another one that'd be great but if not this will be it you know? and we're also working with our water department because there are water mains that need to be replaced so we try to dovetail Right. The replacement with the paving, so we don't <laughs> pave it, but then dig it up to. Well, we're actually doing that right now on one street. Well, but, but, but we avoided it a couple it. years ago. But yeah, we, we avoided it. Out another one coming. So I go through that a lot. Yeah, yeah. where I live, oh. but that's the way it is. It is, yeah. And you just can't avoid it. Okay, I have a. If there's no further discussion, I have a number of uh, two hundred sixty thousand dollars, two hundred sixty thousand five hundred dollars. For Groton Long Point. Uh, all in favor? Yes. 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 Three in favor? Zero. Zero. Nine, one. One. Okay, now we're going to 109, 12 street lighting. 109. And I have a number of uh, 15,358. This is the, the council's number? This is the town's number, yes, yeah, same uh, as with the city. Okay. Three thousand three hundred and fifty eight. Do I have a motion on this to approve? Um, I'll make a motion to approve the fifteen. Or wait, I'm looking at the wrong yeah. thing. Sorry. Yeah, okay. One oh, eighty. Fifteen three right. five eight. Right. Yep. Fifteen three five eight. Do I have a second? And I'll second that. Okay. I'll give you a voice, Gary. <laughs> okay. Any discussion? This is an increase from uh, last year. Not much. $102. Yeah. Just for general operational. Yeah. Well, it's it, that number came from the town. That did not come okay. from us. Yeah, we drew that number. And it's got utility service area, so electric price increases. Okay. In that case, we'll talk about uh, no further discussion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Three in favor? Zero. Zero. I think that's Thank it. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. Have a good yeah. night. <laughs> yeah. Are the <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Where do we begin? <laughs> Stacy's reloaded for bear here. Uh oh. I don't think this cable's going to hold all the books here. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we're working on that too, but didn't hear this time. One oh seven. Uh, one ten. Uh, sorry. Yeah, one oh seven. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Stacy Elman Lynch. I'm the supervisor of admin. Okay. I'm Bob Sharap. I'm the fleet and facilities. Oh, cool. Nice to meet you. For the record, Greg Hanover, director of public works. Oh. Okay. What's your last name again? Sorry, Don. What's your last name again? Sharap. C H A R E P T E. E P T E. And Stacey Ullman Leach, L E I T C H. Oh, T C H? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I guess we're going to look at uh for my looking at I, I go to uh page one ten, which is the numbers. One oh seven is the uh public works ten thirty five. And uh, I guess we'll dig in with the CIPs, Greg. That's where we're at, or is that? No, no, we have to do the 1035 budget first. Yep. We have to move the number. Okay. Yeah, I don't have any of that. It's on page 110? Yeah, 110 or 111. 110, they're middle of the, the page. They're both the same. Yeah. They have a number of six million five hundred and thirty-four thousand two hundred and twenty-three dollars. So this is just roads. No, or this no. is this is public works operations. We call it. It's personal operations. Oh, I see. And then we go through the yeah. CIPs. Yeah, yeah. We're not even at the. Uh, this is the the general public works budget. We're, we're not at the CIPs. The CIPs are above and beyond okay. the special projects. So I'll put down six million five hundred thirty-four two hundred twenty-three. Do I have a motion on the number of six million five hundred thirty-four thousand uh, dollars? Five hundred thirty-four. Thousand two hundred twenty-three dollars. Um, I can I can make a motion, but I it'd be good to discuss it. So you have I to did, make a motion. I, you have to put it on the floor. Oh, right, so you have to make a motion. And get a second. Oh, okay. so I'll get a second of that. Okay. All right. So I'll just give you a brief overview. Um, we actually went to the council last night, so this is fresh in my mind. <laughs> Um, this budget um, is about a little less than 400,000 over last year. So it's about a six and a half percent increase. And I'll get into the, the reasons for that in a minute, but it basically represents a level service budget. Um, we're providing the same services next year as we are this year. There's no new programs proposed, uh, no changes to personnel. We have 43 full time employees. Um, and we're not proposing any changes to the fees we charge at the transfer station. Um, for the increases, if you see the person, we divide up between personnel and operating. Uh, the personnel is uh, about $145,000 increase over last year. Um, most of that is from gen general contractual wage increases for the 43 employees. It's $112,000 increase. Uh, we put in $2,800 for an intern to do some uh, stormwater mapping work for us this summer that we need to get done for our MS4 permitting. Uh, we have a $14,000 increase in our calculation for our snow overtime. Uh, our snow overtime is based on a five year average. I know this last year we didn't have really much overtime, but you know, we don't know that that's going to fluke or if it's going to mm -hmm. be the norm. If it's the norm, it'll eventually uh, average out. Um, we have a $6,000 increase in our general overtime uh, for when we respond to uh, trees down or uh, other uh, after hours emergencies that we get called in for. And there's a $1,000 increase for overtime for showing up for uh, 
alarms, and vandalism at our vacated schools. Um, in the operations portion of it, we have a, about a $250,000 increase over last year. Um, a lot of it's due to the utilities and the fuel. Um, you know, the street lights, just as you saw with the city and Grand Long Point, were up about $10,000. Um, general utilities, the you know, Public Works pays for all the utilities for all the town buildings, except for the schools. So we pay electric, sewer, water, gas, heating oil for all, you know, the town hall, the library, the senior center, this building, you know, all these town facilities. Um, you know, the cost of electricity and cost of heating oil, just like everybody else has gone up. So that's about a $72,000 increase. Um, just general repairs and maintenance. Um, we have a lot of contractual maintenance agreements with people that take care of our boilers, our air conditioning systems, our chillers, and uh, UPS systems. And those you know, just general inflationary increases up about $22,000. Uh, professional technical services. This is all the uh, contractors we hire to do our uh, maintenance work. Um, you know, like tree trimming, we, you know, with all the, the dead ash trees, we have to increase that to uh, take care of our roads and streets for tree trimming. So that's about a $10,000 increase. Uh, building maintenance vendor contracts is about an $8,000 increase. This is for uh, custodial and, and, and the like. Um, we also um, have a closed landfill up at Flanders Road, and we have a flare that collects you know, we have a gas pipe system collects all the methane gas, so we have a flare that burns that off. We have a lot of uh, repairs that need to be done to that system that have been identified, and that's um, so we're showing about a fifty thousand dollar price tag for that. So we have an increase there. Um, materials and supplies. This is uh, the largest increase here from last year. Is the the uh, road saw the cost just keeps going up for the road saw. It's now up to about a hundred dollars a ton. That's about a $56,000 increase. Um, we do also supply the salt that we get reimbursed for it for the Board of Ed in Groton Long Point. Um, and then we have um, some equipment uh, that we need to purchase to uh, be able to do our jobs. One of them is a four post vehicle lift for our highway garage. Uh, the one we have there now is in pretty poor condition and our vendor that does the testing inspection of it has recommended that that get replaced. So we have you know, 35,000 in there for that. Um, up at our transfer station, we have some dumpsters um, that are beyond their useful life that we're looking to get replaced. And then there's a few other incidents. So that's you know kind of it in a nutshell. Um, I went too fast, but you know, I'd be happy to answer any questions you guys have. Um, and, and once again, you know, the council did approve the, the full amount last night at their meeting. So do you have salt left over from this year since we didn't have much snow? Yeah, we do. Our salt should actually full. But if we have a bad year next year, we'll go through that in probably like three or four storms and we'll have to buy some more. So again, we do, you know, we kind of, we were doing about $1,200, 1,200 tons a year, but that was, we were going through that in a normal year, we were going beyond that actually. So we actually upped our, increased our quantity by a little bit up to 1500, because that seems to be about average. Is there an increase of, in cost for salt attributed just to the uh, location as to where you have to pick it up now? No, we go through the uh, Capital Region Council of Government, which is a cooperative buying group, right. and they bid it out. And you know, we used to get it from the, the state pier over to London, but right. then he had to leave a few years ago. So then yeah. we bid it out, and I think it was Champion was the first year they were out of New Haven, then Eastern, which is out of Providence. You know, and all this the salt prices, it's all delivered to us. So they do. To, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So we don't yeah. have to go anywhere again. They right. deliver it to us. But no. you know, the, the cost of the salt and then the trucking. You know, fuel prices, everything just increasing the price of the salt. And the lift in the garage is that? That's well, Sean's lift. That's okay. The, okay. Lift. Okay. That's and yeah. the, pro the problem with that is it's yeah. essentially ramps that you drive up on, yeah. and everything that drips off of a truck, salt 
snow, everything yeah. sits on top of it. Whereas a regular car lift, it would essentially fall down onto the concrete floor and you could sweep it into the drain. But the nature of this lift, it all just kind of sits on the top of those plates. And, and I mean, it's over 20 years old and it's just time, unfortunately. I think it didn't that come from the city to begin with? This is actually our second one. The first one came from uh, the Board of Ed when they disbanded their automotive program. Oh, almost 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to move on. <laughs> the other lifts are actually the same age, but because of the nature of the design of the lifts, those are actually aging very well. I like those. I like that concept, the four post lift. Yeah. We tried to get it back in the 70s and nobody was in line with the advanced technology. They didn't, they thought it was uh, just crazy idea. Wow. So, uh, man, your part time personnel, that's your intern? $2,800? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, I have one more question. Um, you said that the costs of all the contractors have gone up, right? For the the contracts that you have with them. Do you negotiate those at all, or do they just kind of say this is the price and you? Uh, you there are it? some that we go off the the state will have a, a bid prices from different contractors where the state will bid it. We can piggyback off those, like mm -hmm. for tree removal, um, things like that. But there are contracts like the janitorial will have, will do. Typically long term, like three or four year, but we do go out to bid and negotiate. Okay, so yeah. some of those increases you've known about for years, or yeah, I would say that you know, they're they're generally I think they're built into the contract, right? That they can get a two percent or whatever the yeah prices. every every year a contract has essentially a built in bump up for it. Sure. Um, this year, obviously, with minimum wages going up and everything, and the custodial thing that affected them a lot. Right. And then the other thing that we buy from them is the supplies. So instead of us warehousing you know, a room full of toilet paper and paper towels, you know, we rely on them to do that. And of course, you, you're at market price, for that right. kind of stuff, so. Okay. And then what do you do if you have a surplus, like if you don't have to buy, if you don't need to buy the salt next year that you- It goes back do? into the general fund at the end of the year. Oh, okay, so you can't, you can't allocate it to something else? Or, um, it could be, you know, could be allocated to something else in public works, but you know, we're not out to like spend money just because we have it. I mean, if right. we don't need it, we're not going to spend it. But at the okay. end of the year, as long as we come below the, you know, the six point five million, we're, we're good, and whatever's left it goes back into the general fund. Okay. I have a question about the uh, maintenance. Uh, a couple of years ago, they decided to save money by getting rid of one mechanic at the garage and and they uh, passed the costs on to the fire districts and they no longer provided maintenance for the fire districts. And at least uh, Chief Richards complained to me. He said they never even came to us saying, you know, trying to negotiate a higher rate. And they're paying a lot more money to go to outside vendors. And so I and every time I bring it up, they keep thinking, you know, you have to hire a new staff and, and do all this stuff, you know, and get promises. But uh, I think it could be done in the same way as you do with the automotive garages and dealerships. When they get a backlog of uh, work, then they'll hire someone to clear the backlog. That's not clear. You don't have to have everybody's pinky swear they're going to have all our maintenance work done. No, anyway, it's just something I, you know, I bring it up every year and I'm doing it again. Well, we have two issues. Uh, number one is, is manpower. We only have four guys and we back to when Roscoe started in the sixties, there were only four mechanics and the equipment has gotten more and more complex. And, and our backlog is over three and a half, four weeks now of equipment to repair. So that's one issue. Um, the other issue, which is really the bigger issue is I just don't have the room to repair that equipment. There's several, there's several pieces of my own equipment that I have difficult time fitting into the garage, but like Old Mystic's ladder truck, 
um, uh, Mystic Silk and Ladder truck, I can't even physically bring those into the building, which makes it very difficult to service those. And uh, the complexity of repairing a fire truck is obviously much different than a highway pickup or something of that nature. So the time it takes to service one of these vehicles um, really hurts our uh, our ability to do that. And also, with if I can get the vehicle inside the shop, I just don't have the the geographical space to be able to service things. I, I just don't have the room to maintain the size and uh, level of complexity of equipment. Any further discussion? That's the best explanation I've heard uh, so far. And I don't, you know, maybe there's a, a way, well, if, if you already have a backlog, I don't know, maybe, and you're short of space, it doesn't seem that uh, you're going to be able to fit in smaller vehicles or, or you know, more modest things to add, add to it. Thank you. Any further discussion? If not, we'll vote on the number of $6,534,223. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Three yes, zero, zero. Okay. Now into CIPs. Okay. <laughs> Get out the book. Uh, how, how do we want to do? Well, we'll just do by the numbers and a brief overview of the letters. Yeah, you have to move and second the, uh, the number and then we'll discuss. Okay, I got to find my, my way through the. Yeah, two eleven. Okay. And so this year you're looking for uh the CIP uh well I want to say we go by the numbers, but I think we're gonna have to break it down. CIP 1A. Yeah. And I have CIP 1A is $1 million. Do we do this? Are you asking for the 2024 or the total? Uh, 2024. Sorry, 24, so that would be $1 million. $1 million for two here. Okay. For CIP 1A. Let me take one second. Since this is your first time through this, if you look at the um, bottom of the page, it says the source of funding, and then it says FYE 2024. That's the number. Add three zeros to all okay. of those. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. First year I looked at it, and I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> A thousand bucks, it's yours. We're good. You totally <laughs> exactly. So we if we approve this, we're approving just FY 2024. Yeah, that's all he's asking for. That's all the council approved. So uh I have a motion to approve a number of one million dollars for the town pavement management program. I call for a motion. Um, I'll move, um, or I'll second, or your comment. Okay. Sorry. Oh, well, I'll upstage Wells this time. Now, discussion. You have questions. Um. So. Let me just give a brief overview of it yes. first. Yeah. It would be helpful. I think he'll answer a lot of your Probably. questions in a <laughs> yeah. simple overview. This is uh, the town's pavement management uh, CIP. This is where we get all our, our funding for paving all our, our roads in town. Um, a number of years ago, we used to do it by bonding. Uh, we had a big bond that was like 
$11 million, I think it was. <laughs> and also the city, the Grant Long Point and the town, that lasted about 10 years. A few years ago, the town council decided they didn't want to bond for roads anymore. They want to pay the interest rate. So they wanted to put it back in the CIP, which is where it historically was prior to the bonding. Um, so now we're, we're paying as we go along. Um, a number of years ago, the town inspected all 100 miles of our roads um, through a pavement management uh, software program. And we actually went out and inspected all the distresses and assigned a number between zero and 100, which is called the pavement condition index. PCI, 100 being the best, zero being a failed road. So we have every road in town, you know, is given a priority. Uh, we've been, you know, going through that list over the years and, you know, we're, we're uh, slowly working away on getting all the bad roads up to where they should be. Um, this year, we're looking at doing um, mostly roads down in Noink. Um, we have down here, uh, Brookview Court, Cove Street, Church Street, I'll skip over Flanders for a minute. Marsh Road, Pearl Street, Potter Street, and Smith Street. Those are all confined kind of within NOAC. Um, the reason we do that is we can save on the mobilization. We bring in a reclaimer that grinds up the pavement, and grades it out. So if they come in and just do a few roads, it's, it's a lot cheaper than you know moving around town all over the place. Um, these roads, if you if you look in the book, the PCIs are pretty pretty low on these, you know, 30s and 28s. And that that's a pretty bad road. Um, so we're looking at doing all those, and we do, with the exception of Flanders Road, which is a larger road, we'll do all these with our in-house crews. So we bring in a contract that does reclaiming, they grade it out, and then our highway crew does the actual paving. Um, they do a great job of it. We've got you know, in-house expertise to do it now, um, and, and they're you know, really great work with the residents when they're in front of their house and whatnot. So it really works out for us. Um, Flanders Road is one of our major collector roads. A couple of years ago, we did the north end of it, which was from I-95 up to 184. This year, we're proposing to the south end, uh, which is from Route 1 up to I-95. So that complete road will be done. Um, this would be contract out just because of the size of it. We actually just do a mill where they take down like an inch and a half, leave the asphalt base and just do an overlay. That's quite a bit cheaper doing it that way. That road was, was built pretty well back in the uh, 60s, I think it was. Um, so all the, you know, the estimates for all these, uh, all this paved roads comes up to about 1.2 million, which is kind of what we've identified as the amount of money we need each year to keep our roads where they are and, and to start improving them. Um, we do have about 180,000 left over from last year, so we'll apply that. So that's why we're just asking for a million this year instead of the 1.2. So why is there 180k left from? last year it's just uh we did buddington road last year and the prices we did a contract and the prices came in a lot less than we had estimated it so uh, you know when you approve the cap those funds stay there for five years so we just keep rolling it over and last year you we approved eight hundred and fifty thousand. it looks like yeah because the previous year we had even more money saved okay so yeah. that so we didn't need as much yeah okay so yeah, I'm not one that's going to keep asking for the full 1.2. If we have money left over, we'll just keep applying it every year. I have a question on, uh, do we still feel comfortable using the, uh, what I call strip paving? Or are we trying to get away from that? Let me skip there, I'm not sure you're asking. When you just strip off X number of inches and lay over it? You don't you don't yeah, address yeah. the bed. Yeah, we mill, yeah, we'll mill it because the, the asphalt's thick there. It was put in yeah. thick. So we'll just mill off oh, okay. just the top layer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But the roads that we reclaim are these like so a lot of these roads are annoying. That's what be, I was looking for was the they could be super thin in some areas. So yeah. we reclaim it, which we'll go down probably a good eight to ten inches. It grinds all the gravel and the pavement yeah. up together, makes a nice base, they smooth it off great, and then we put four inches of new asphalt. I must say it'll be an improvement. We've been doing that to all the roads for the, probably the last 10 years or so. Yeah. And it's really, yeah. you looked at some of the roads we did 10 years ago and they still look, you know, like we just did them. Yeah. So I think that method's working pretty well. Why choose um, Flanders with a PCI of 65? Because of the uh, 
type of road it is. It's a collector road, has a high volume of traffic. Um, in fact, we just did the north part, which was had a much lower PCI, but um, we did that one. We just want to get the whole road because we've done Buddington Military Highway, all of our major like north south collector roads. We just want to get that one up to 100. How often do you reevaluate the PCI? Um, probably do it. The inspection is about every five years, but there is a graph that the pavement, you know, it's like paint on a house. It does start to deteriorate. And, and you know, when you're close to 100, it stays there for a while, but then it starts really falling off. And when it gets to a certain number, it'll really start dropping. Um, so the computer program will, will automatically drop these PCIs as, as the years go on. But, you know, we do want to go out there and reinspect them you know, physically. So probably in the next few years, we'll probably do it again. Okay. Any more discussion? If not, uh, Gary? I really appreciate this PC, these PCI numbers because uh, other than having roads paid by popularity contests. It kind of eliminates that. <laughs> If there's no further discussion, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Okay, three, no, no. Uh. Protocol, I'm sorry, I do have one quick question. River Road has been a hot ticket. How far out are we looking for that? So I have that with tags in here. It's a 56. Okay. Um, My apologies. I mean, after. No, no. The council asks. Everybody asks. There's a lot of interest in that road. Which, you know, it's 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 a beautiful road. Uh, there are some flooding issues there, so we are looking at um, some grant money to do a, a study of you know raising the road in some areas. So until we do that, we're probably just going to keep the repairs going. Doesn't make sense to repave the whole road and then come in a few years later and raise up half of it. You know, the sea level rise is just becoming an issue out there. Okay, thank you. My apologies, Mr. Chair. Okay, moving on to CIP 1B, bridge repair, page 212. And we're looking at $210,000 request. Okay, I'll motion to. Uh, I'm just kind of. Is that the correct number? Two hundred and ten thousand. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Motion. Uh, motion to approve the two hundred and ten thousand. Second. I'll second. Gotcha. <laughs> this is um, funds to address uh, two bridges in town. One is uh, Marine Street over Amtrak, um, that bridge, it's hard to believe, but that bridge is, uh, was it, almost 30 years old now. Um, the last two state inspections, state DOT inspects that bridge for us every two years. They've identified the expansion joints, which is you know, the part that you see in the pavement uh, when you drive over the bridge on each end, it has deteriorated to the point where it's allowing water to drip through into the abutments below and starting to deteriorate with the salt and stuff. So, uh, last year, we had funds for design for that, um, which we, we completed um, the preliminary engineering design for that. And this year, we're asking for um, 130 for Meridian Street, you know, 30,000 for the final design and contract documents, and then 100,000 for the actual construction. And that would be done um, probably this fall. Um, the other bridge is the Thomas Road Bridge. It's actually a small box culvert. Um, this was put in in the in the eighties. Uh, we had a DOT did a kind of a cursory review of these smaller bridges for us a number of years ago, and they identified this one as one that needs a full investigation. So we hired an engineering firm to come out and do that. They did that last year. They identified a number of uh, issues that need to be corrected, um, but we haven't started the actual design work and stuff. So we're looking at. 80,000 just to do the design and permitting for that because some of the work is in Baker's Cove. So there's an extensive permitting component to this. 
Um, once we get the, that design done, they'll give us a cost estimate and we'll come back next year in FY25 with the actual construction funds. So the total of, of the, uh, the two bridges, um, you know, 130 for Meridian Street and 80 for Thomas Road is the 210,000 requested. Any discussion? Yeah, I, I... Go ahead. Gary. Yeah, um, uh, I, I do, I have to ask about the North Stonington Road Bridge. Uh, the budget book says C1F or something, and there is no 1F. Uh, that was zeroed out by the town manager because Stonington was not going to fund it this year. So I know they put in for uh, state bond money for that. I don't know where that's at, Gary, that got approved yet or not. Um, yeah, that, that was that discussion that just came up about the bonding of uh, the North Stonington Bridge and uh, Groton Long Point Bridge. I believe that's moving in the direction of bonding. That's why the council zeroed both of them out. In other words, it's not going to be up to us. It's moving on. I think the town manager zeroed it out. I don't think the council even had it, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah council... it just sort of said see elsewhere. Yeah. I think you'll get your bridge. I don't know when. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> I was okay. hoping it would be done in time for the centennial in, in uh, 19, uh, see. Well, we'll, we'll jot that down. I'm muted. We'll jot that down. Uh, All right. Any, oh, by any... the way, while, while, we're, while we're on it, uh, there was another deficient bridge and, and I don't, uh, the Packer Road Bridge, the one on the, the bridge to the west on Packer Road. And there used to be a sawhorse or a barricade up there, and that's gone. So, did you address that and figure out what it was that uh, that put it on the not so good uh, list? Yeah, I know we did some work on that a number of years ago. I'd have to go back and look through the records to see uh, when that was put on the list. I think it was, you know, before we did the work on it. And I don't think they ever updated their records to the state. I don't think that I've long forgotten about that one. I don't think that was a really significant issue. I don't think it was going to fall down. I, I took a look at it and there was a a little barricade at the side of the road the town of Groton put up there and and uh, that's gone now. I haven't been back and crawled around. The bridge itself looks, uh, you know. Are you, you talking know, about the intersection of Packer Road and 184? Or yeah, but that, that, that end. Way? That end. There's another one down at uh, further down on. You know, yeah, I don't. I don't think that was a bridge issue. That could have been something else. No, there was but, a bridge. It's on the bridge list. Yeah. But, any wait, any further discussion? Yeah, we oh. we got to stick to this. I just Hopefully. had two questions. I may have misunderstood you, but did you say? The for the Meridian Street extension bridge, they would begin working in the fall. If we get the approval for, yeah. Oh, okay. So even though it's still FY twenty three. Um, this is, well, this or, is these these funds if they're all approved would be available July first. Oh, okay. That makes sense. And then did did we repair any bridges last year? I know we did some studies, but. Uh, bridge repairs last year. No. Okay. Is there any further discussion? If not, we'll vote on $210,000 for CIP 1B. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Uh, Three in favor? Zero. Zero. <sighs> Okay, CIP 1E, Road Reconstruction Main Street, No Inc. Uh, okay, here we go. You're looking for uh, 
three hundred thousand right now. Correct. Okay. For engineering. So, do I have a motion on a number of three hundred thousand? Gary, are you, are you in line? I'll I'll, I'll, I'll I'll motion to approve the three hundred thousand. I'll second it. We're doing, uh, Gary. We're doing uh, Main Street knowing page two thirteen for right now. He's muted. Did you mute yourself? Looks like the council adopted the uh, right. amount. This is for the engineering. They basically were going one at a time, but they basically approved of everything for all oh. these CIPs. But we'll just go through them one at a time for discussion and rationale, et cetera. So we have a motion. And you second this motion, Gary? Oh, yeah, well, I'll second that one. Okay. This is uh, Main Street Noick, which I don't know if you're familiar with that. It runs from um, the railroad tracks where you come in. Well, if you go into Noick over Mosier Avenue Bridge, you, the playground's on your left. Main Street goes to the right and left. So from the right all the way to the railroad tracks, all the way up over the hill down to the town dock. It's about 1,500 feet, and that road is actually one of the worst in town. PCI is like 20 something in some of the areas. Um, it varies in width throughout the whole length of it. The drainage is poor on it. The sidewalks are in poor condition. Uh, there's really some accessibility issues. Um, you know, it has both commercial and residential uses on the road, so there are some parking issues. So this is really a not just a you know grind it up a pavement project. This is a complete reconstruction of the entire road, including curbing, drainage, sidewalks, um, streetscape amenities like benches, trees, lighting even. So last year we had gotten an approval from the council um, to start the conceptual design process, which we're in process of that now. There's some public informational meetings, you know, public input meetings. So this is just a continuation of that. Once we get you know, that ball rolling, this will get right into using this these funds for the preliminary engineering, preliminary design, and cost estimates to see, you know, well, how much this project's really going to cost. And it may be enough that it would require uh, bonding. That will you know, be up to the council to decide if they want to put it as a CIP or bond for it if it's a large enough project. But uh, I think it's going to be significant construction costs. But right now we're looking at just um, 300000 to just, you know, Keep the consultant engineer moving into uh, some real more detailed plans and engineering. Uh, is this going right and left at the park, or is just going to the left down to the town dock? The right to okay. The whole of the, the whole of Main Street. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so the roads that were included in the uh, the town pavement. Those are all just being paved. Right. I mean, that's why you broke this one. That's out. why this is broken out. Yeah, because yeah, this is this is going to require beyond just an awful lot of work. Right. I've been down there and seen the project, and it's going to require an awful lot of work. Yeah. And also, it's going to require more than one public meeting. I'm oh, sure of that. Several, yeah. if not more. You know, right. I mean, we've actually got more letters from NOAC this year about supporting this project and, and their paving projects and we've gotten for anything else in the CIP. Something relating to the condition of this road, is there any liabilities on the town? Should it deteriorate any further? Well, sure, I mean, if, you know, especially the sidewalks, if somebody slips, strips and falls on bad sidewalks, you know, we'll be getting. And how about the road? Can somebody more or less prefer litigation if, if they have an accident, shape, yeah. if it's attributed to the road? Yeah. Okay. That was just always in my mind and I wasn't certain of it. So is there a chance that, I mean, you, you do all these, you know, you do the preliminary design study. Is there a chance that you wouldn't 
repair the road or it sounds, I mean. You know, like if it came like, say the price came in at $5 million to redo the whole road. Right. And we went to a referendum because you know, it was going to be bonded and the voters said no. Then we would you know, maybe scale the project back or come, you know, come up with a plan B, I guess. But I mean, we'll have to do the road. Something will have to be done. Right. Eventually. Okay. So this isn't, I mean, this isn't a waste of money. Like even if you had to scale it back, you still need to do this study. Right. Any further discussion? If not, I'll call for a motion on a number of $300,000. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three, approve. Okay, that takes care of one now. Uh, CIP three sidewalks. And we're looking for a uh, motion to approve $75,000. I'll I'll make, motion, okay. I'll motion to approve seventy-five thousand. Second. Second. Any discussion? Um, this is our. Uh, sidewalk uh, repair funds, if you will. We've been asking for 75000 for the last few years and we've been getting it. So we've been slowly uh, repairing all our existing concrete sidewalks, uh, adding handicap ramps where they need to be added or replacing them where they don't meet ADA requirements. Um, last year, we hired a contractor. Um, they came in and they ground down um, trip hazards where you know you might have a sidewalk panel that's like lifted maybe half an inch or more that becomes a trip hazard you know people trip over their own two feet like I would and um, you know so we, we grind those down so we can provide a smooth sidewalk you know we concentrate last year on the route one area mostly in downtown Groton um, this year we're going to be continuing that up route 12 to the sub base um, and also do the Deerfield subdivision there's a lot of uh, sidewalks that have heaved up in that subdivision and there's a bunch of sidewalks up there. Um, and then we're replacing deteriorated sidewalks along Library Street from uh, Elm Street down to Route 1 and Mystic and by the Baptist Church there. Um, and then also on the north side of Route 1 from Allen Street to Elm Street. I mean, we actually just had a few months ago, uh, somebody trip and while well, there we had a claim against the town for those sidewalks. So this is just our you know, annual allotment to go out and, and to repair all the interior sidewalks in the town. Just to make a point that the sidewalks along a state road are actually our property, our problem. Right. Yeah. Okay. Even though they're in the state right away, the town yep. owns and maintains the sidewalks in the state road. That's by state statute. Yeah. So do you use the full 75k each year? Yeah, we have some last for last year, so we'll use that again. Again, it kind of rolls over to the next year. But that's kind of like about seems to be about the balance what we can spend you know, and, and get the, the projects done. Okay. And there's changes in ADA compliances that have to be con considered yeah. into this. Yeah, every yeah. yeah. No, every year I think it changes. Okay. Uh any further discussion? I'll call for a motion on uh, $75,000 to approve. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll move 70. Okay. Okay, three in favor. This is why they taught me how to write, I suppose. CIP three C. 
infill sidewalk construction. Uh, I need an explanation of uh, first. I'll, I'll get the two hundred thirty thousand dollars. Do I have a motion to approve that number? Two hundred thirty thousand. I'll move that. Okay. And a second. I'll second it. And discussion. Um, infill sidewalk. This is adding new sidewalk where currently none exist. Um, we've been getting you know, roughly a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. We've been adding them along Route One. Uh, we still have some projects that are in the planning stages or engineering stages, which will be going out uh, to bid this summer. Um, the money we're looking for 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 this coming year, the two hundred thirty is. Is two sidewalk sections we're looking at doing. One is the Clinic Plains Park in front of the park from the driveway entrance up to the gas station. There's currently no sidewalk there. So we'll add that in and that'll connect like you know the middle school, Sutton Park. They can cross the road to the gas station and they can walk along the whole side of the uh, Route 1 there. Um, and then the other area is um, down in Groton Long Point Road from Brook Street uh, no, I'm sorry, not from Brook Street, from uh, Elm Street to um, Esker Point Beach on the west side. If you ever driven down there, there's like a, gra a gravel area behind the curb there, and you always see people walking on that. There's been so some requests for that area. So this is, you know, put that sidewalk in along that area. So these would be all new, you know, concrete sidewalks. Um, It's pretty expensive to put a sidewalk in. I, it's, yeah, I mean, you know, the, the one at Aquatic Plains is about estimated about a hundred thousand dollars, and the one at Esker Point Beach or Garth Long Point Road is one hundred thirty thousand. So, yeah, for roughly how much? How many? Uh, I mean, how many miles? Or I guess it's not miles. It's probably. Um. Be... Like the Conic Plains Park is 550 feet long. Mm -hmm. And that one we do have like there's a head wall for drainage and some wetlands we have to deal with there. So that adds a little bit to the price. Um, and then the one at yeah, Grot Long Point Road, actually it's a I can't be the same length. Maybe it is. It says it's the same length, but that one has curbing as well. So that does add to the price. As they'll have an integral concrete curb because it's right up against the road. Um, it should be 215, correct? That's the same road. That's where you would turn to go to Mystic. Yeah, you're right where you, yeah. yeah 215 so turns to the left there, but if we yeah. keep going straight, that's, that's a town right. road. And then, yeah. yeah, you go over that, there's a bridge there that goes over Amtrak. Uh, actually, just north of that bridge, I think the sidewalk stops. Okay. And there's a sidewalk on the bridge, so we'll connect to that, and then from the bridge down to the Esker Point Beach. Uh, any further discussion? Questions? I know you have some. No, I just think it's expensive. Okay. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, we don't we don't make the prices. I, I mean, I all the projects are all bid out to, you know, there's a little bit of contractors. So. Sure. So you do have the option, and I'm not saying suggesting this, I'm saying you do have the option of saying, you know what, I don't feel like this is an appropriate project, so I'm going to make a recommendation that we cut $100,000 and we only approve $130,000, just so you are aware of what you can do. I mean, have you, well, this probably costs money too, but have you done studies to see how much these would be used or, or um, do you just kind of pick? No, well, we had in 2005, the town had a master trails plan done, our parks and rec did, and they identified certain areas and that's those high priority areas. And those are the ones we're doing now and they are re uh, evaluating and uh, redoing that study now, I think probably in the next year or so. I think they got some funding to do that. But these were, you know, these were areas that were identified in that study. 
my own personal knowledge is there's been a lot of people requesting the continuation of these sidewalks. Okay. I mean, they go for a walk and all of a sudden they come to a dead end. Right. To them, that's more than I would consider, but uh, I don't live there. I don't walk there. So. Yeah, I, I do walk near Esker Point. So that one I. Yeah. That one is understand. the one most thought of. Right. People going down to the beach and to the restaurants, right. et cetera. Okay, any further discussion? I'll call for a motion on $230,000 for new sidewalks. Yes. All those in favor? Yes. All right. Three in favor? I might add that all of these CIPs so far, these were council numbers approved by the council as we go on, go forth. So now we go CIP six public buildings. Hey. Big jump, big jump. Uh, page 232. And we're looking at a uh, number of $180,000. Do I have a motion to approve that number? A motion to approve it. Second. Second. Discussion. Uh, this is for the Human Services Building, which is down near Town Hall. Um, this building is it's an older building. It was actually started out as a school in the early 1900s and later became the town library until the and then when the town library moved over to their current facility in 1977, I think they put in these residential windows at that time uh, for what was formerly social services, now human services. Um, so the, these windows, I mean, you know, they, they lift them up, they're double hung, they drop down, they just, you know, get complaints all the time about the air leakage and the energy inefficiency of these windows. So we're looking at, um, you know, uh, design and construction money for this year to uh, replace all the windows. I think there's um, I think like eight large double hungs and maybe 10 small double hung windows. There's 18 total windows in this building with new, you know, energy efficient, hurricane debris resistant windows for the 180,000. You get any state or federal rebates from installing like energy efficient windows? Uh, yeah, I don't think so, because we don't pay taxes. Usually that's a tax rebate oh, or something okay. like that. Right. I mean, we do get rebates for like lighting and, and stuff like that. Uh -huh. But I'm not, have you uh, never seen no, anything? No, I don't believe so. We received that for okay. those. And are you planning on using this building for a long time in the future? Uh, human services, we've looked at moving them to different buildings, but I think they like it there. It suits their needs very well because they have the food locker down there. And, and you know, so there's no plans to rebuild it or to build it. move. It's a strong brick building. Uh, yeah. Interior wise, it fits their space, and they like the the their patrons and them like the convenience of having being away from the public eye, being able to access the services without exposing themselves to, you know, it's it's easy, easy and easy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if I'm correct, but I think that building's got a long past history of usage. And I can't remember who was in there, but it was more than just one entity at one time. Well, I mean, it started out as a school, and then it was yeah. the library for a while. Yeah, and then it on and on and on. 
good size building too. It's deceiving yeah. from the road. It doesn't look as large as it is, but they have a really large front conference room they use for women and children um, come in and set up their programs. They have other um, social service programs that come in and provide that. And then they have a full office space and a full basement down below. So there's really a, a lot of space in there. It doesn't look like as big as it is from the road. We have our social services, I guess, with really doesn't require much and we're maintaining what would what programs there and yeah. it's being taken care of. We also have a good sized community garden up to the side. Oh, yeah. Out out and back there. That, so. Yeah. I do want to disclose that I don't have a real conflict of interest, but they are a partner program of my agency. So um, just so that you're aware of that. Um, and I have been in that wind in that building when it's been windy. It is cold. <laughs> so I would very much support these windows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you pay for more heat then. Right, I'm, exactly. I'm really surprised the windows got along this far. Okay. I just told her staff, she said they're all so happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone's here. Yeah, I was there on the wrong or on the right day, I guess, because yeah. it was. Okay, uh, any further discussion? I uh, call for a vote on a number of $180,000. Yes. Uh, three in favor? Zero, zero. Now, CIP six. C is uh yeah this one was actually zeroed out by the council okay at my request okay I have a number of zero uh do I have a motion a uh, motion for zero second second I remember this one from last and year. And discussion will be requested by Director of Public Works for zero. Yeah, I mean, just as a little explanation, I mean, we were working with an architect to do a space needs study um, for the, the community center to do some renovation work for Parks and Rec, move the Spicer House up there, move the judge of probate out of town hall into that space, move IT out of the basement. With all their server equipment into the, that space. Um, originally, we thought, oh, this is just going to be some simple renovation work, you know. So we just need 150,000 to do some plans and stuff next year. Well, we got the architect in there, and all of a sudden, you know, we got into energy codes and all this other stuff. And because that building is just brick, there's no insulation whatsoever. We're looking at building walls inside the building, the whole place. And there was a desire from. Uh, Council in the RTM last year to go to a carbon free heating and cooling system. So we're looking at uh, electric heat pumps with solar panels, which would have been great because it would have been a, you know, paid for itself in net zero. But the price of all these things, you know, the new electric service, all these new roofs, uh, you know, all this stuff that we need to do is coming in roughly like a $30 million project. So it's like we could almost build, you could build a new building for that. So we're going to be going to the council, um, I think on May 9th, with the architect to give them an overview of this and see you know, where this is going to go. So it just didn't make sense to have any money this year for doing yeah. anything because it's, we need to look at a bigger picture, you know, when they're looking at aquatic centers and everything else, yeah. it's like, we've got a lot coming down the road. Coming out. So what do you guys really want to do? Do you want to have just one big building? Do you want to, you know, there's, there's a bunch of questions out there. So that's in a nutshell why this is zeroed out. I'm going to put 150,000 next to it, just for a reminder of what's actually been cut from the budget. So did you replace the flooring in the Oh, the town clerks? No, we have we haven't done that yet, actually, Bob, have we? That was approved last year. Okay. Okay, no further discussion. Uh I'll take a motion on zero for CIP six C. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Three approved. Zero. Just for clarification, you're not taking a motion on it. You're voting on the motion. Oh, okay. Just so there's not a question later. Six C. CIP six D Library. Okay. Is, uh, Seventy thousand or thirty. Seventy thousand dollars for the library for improvements. Do I have a motion for do I have approval of a motion for seventy thousand dollars? A motion to approve the seventy thousand. I'll second that. Discussion. Uh, there's two projects here. Um, the first is uh, 40,000 for design for uh, developed plans and contract documents to replace the roof over the uh, 1995 edition area, which is uh, includes the studio and the, uh, the quiet reading area and the, and the tech services in the back of the building. Um, that's, you know, the roof has ended its uh, near the end of its useful life, um, and we do have where it meets the the, uh, the old library, which has a new roof on it. There's a, a seam there that does. We do have problems with leakage there, so you know we're looking at uh, forty thousand for uh, an architect to come up with plans for doing that replacement, and then we'll put in next year's budget the actual construction for that roof replacement. Um, the second project is thirty thousand to. Uh, kind of rehab the plumbing system in the two public bathrooms. Um, the way it's set up, there's very little access to the plumbing system, and we have some I guess, older pipes that are calcified, so we do get flooding, believe it or not, in the bathrooms. And Bob's guys have to go down there quite often and try to snake it out, and so we just want to redo the drainage system or the plumbing system that those two bathrooms. Like the most same. important thing in this entire budget so far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So far, this has been that fine line between maintenance and repair. You don't do the maintenance, you'll be in the repair. Okay, any further discussion? So why does it cost 40K just to develop a plan to replace a, a roof? I mean, why don't you just have a company come out and this is what it'll cost to replace it. I, I know this is a no, no, that's question, I mean, there's certain things you can do that, but like with a roof, you have to go out to bid with it, so we have to you know, create plans and, and contract documents, and they have to you know detail. And you know, and each roof is a little different, it's not like the roof on your house. I mean, there's a lot of that goes into this. So, they the architects that you know they specialize in these roofs, they come out and they you know give their expertise, they develop all the plans and whatnot um, for how this is to be built. So, that, and then we, you know, create documents so that all the contractors, okay. it's on an even playing field for everybody so we can get, you know, proper bids. And then it, it also includes them, you know, during the construction, they would be, you know, reviewing and inspecting the work, um, approving uh, some of those, you know, the products that they're using. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So it, yeah, it's, it's, People that aren't used to this see these numbers and say, like, wow, it costs up. You can, <laughs> know, you can roof like 20 houses for that, right? Right. <laughs> this is not working on your home. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, no, it, it yeah. deserves an explanation because no, of the so. differences. Yeah. I mean, if you're doing yeah. your house, you just have three contractors come out and they give you plans. Right. Yeah. That's it. But yeah, it's a little, you know, when you deal with the public, you know, public bidding stuff, we have to create contract documents. Mm -hmm. So part of that money would go towards your staff to do the work? Or no, no, this, this would be an architect. We don't have the in-house oh, expertise is... to do that. So we have on-call architects we call, you know, bring in. Okay. To uh, do that type of work. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? 
If not, I'll. All those in uh, favor? Huh? All those in favor. All those in favor of $70,000? Aye. 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 Three of zero, zero. CIP six, I. No, that's okay. the adjournment page. We're not there yet. <laughs> six, I was zero by the town manager. Okay. That's a uh, motion to approve zero. I'll make a motion to approve I don't think zero. you have to do anything. You don't have to do anything. Okay, well, uh, just for record, I'll figure that note out for the Okay, we're on to CIP. I wish she had given me more paper. Yeah, just what I need we'll is more we'll paper. Make a copy. No, I'm good. I've got the backside of everyone okay. that I hit already. A cup of coffee. <laughs> I've got the backside of some of this stuff too. Okay, CIP 10, Water Pollution Control Facility. B, Pump Stations. Always a, oh, always a fun subject, as mm -hmm. Carl Onquist would say. Huh? And we're looking for it'd be 10B. This is two million fifty dollars. Two million fifty dollars. Two million fifty thousand. Fifty thousand. Two million. Right, right. Two million fifty thousand dollars for construction. A uh, motion to approve. Motion for hmm? a motion for to approve. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Gotcha. Discussion. All right. <laughs> this CIP is because. To remind everybody it's paid for out of the sewer user fees not out of the general taxation so that you know, if you're up to sewer you're paying as a resident 35 dollars a month um that pays for all the operations of the sewer it also pays for all their capital improvement projects unless it's a larger project which this would be bonded for but these are smaller projects um so it comes out of their user fees um we're looking at, uh, three separate projects here. The first is the Mumford Cove pump station. This is one of our larger pump stations. Um, it was built probably in the early mid 70s. Uh, it's got the original pumps and everything else uh, still in it. So we're looking at upgrading and replacing those pumps uh, with new controllers, more energy efficient controllers, um, and energy efficient pumps, um, and a bunch of other work. Uh, we Thought we'd be able to just replace the pumps while the pump station was running, so to speak, by just shutting off valves and pulling out pumps, putting new ones in, because there's like four pumps, I believe, in this station. Um, so we got um, money approved last year, which was a million dollars to do that. But then once we got into the engineering work, we found that the, uh, the header system, which is all the valves and piping coming in and out of the pump station, is in pretty poor condition, needs to be replaced. So we have to do a bypass just set up a temporary pump and generator to bypass that pump station during construction. And that's pretty expensive operation. Um, plus the additional work, um, the new cost estimate came in around 2.2 million. So that's why we're asking for the additional 1.2 on top of the one we got last year. Um, so that's that project. The second one is the gravel street pump station. This is the one in downtown Mystic. Um, we actually, had some funds approved for this a while ago. Um, we started the project and then unfortunately, once we got into it, the contractor ordered some materials and due to the, believe it or not, due to the COVID supply chain issue, there was some electrical items that were almost two years out. So the funding actually lapsed on this one. So we're, at, we're kind of right at the budget season. So rather going back to get 
uh, funding reappropriated and reauthorized for that project, which we could have done. We just said, we'll just put it back, put it in the CIP. It's, I mean, it's really, it's coming from the same pot of money anyway. Uh, so that's 250,000. And then the last one is 600,000. This is, we had a uh, consultant do a, a resiliency study of all our coastal pump stations that are subject to flooding. Um, you know, of course, all our pump stations naturally are in the low line areas because that's their job is to collect everything by gravity and then pump it up to the next station. Um, so we have a, a bunch of, uh, I think there's 13 pump stations, which are your little like flood doors and raising oil fill, you know, strapping tanks down, that type of thing. So if it does come, a flood does come, that the station can be resilient to it. Um, so that's 600,000. We are applying for a state uh, grant to pay for 80 or 90% of that. Um, so if we do get that, you know, that uh, money will just go back into the contingency, into the uh, reserve fund. So those three projects together, there's the two million fifty thousand dollars. And when you say it returns to the reserve fund, it's the reserve fund for the sewer usage. For the sewer state. use, yeah, not okay. for the capital reserve, correct? Thank you. And the sewer. Well, they have, did they go up the sewer user fees? Uh, the water pollution control, which we'll get into in the next budget um, tonight. Uh, the Water Pollution Control Authority reviews that, and I think last year, I think it went up 50 cents a month or something like that. The year before, it was like a dollar fifty. This year, they're looking at maybe, again, 50 cents or nothing. I mean, mm -hmm. they haven't decided yet. They'll At their next meeting, they'll be taking up that issue. I might want to add that we come up against this every year with the sewer operating funds. And a lot of it points to maintenance and repairs. And this is one area we can't skimp on, in my opinion, because there's fines, et cetera, that you can encompass if you don't make these repairs in a timely fashion. So with that being said, is there any more discussion? If not, I'll call for a motion on $2,050,000. Motion $2, All in favor? Aye. Aye. Three again, uh, three, yes, whatever it is. Okay. That goes there, and that goes there. CIP. C, treatment facility. And we're looking for $500,000. A uh, motion to approve $500,000. Move that. For uh, treatment uh, for the facility, wastewater treatment facility. I'll uh, move that. I'll second it. Any discussion? Oh, uh, there's two projects here. This is at the treatment plant itself, which is you know where we collect all the wastewater and treat it before we pump it over to the Thames River. Um, the first is um, the effluent pump station, which collects all the treated sewage at the end of the treatment train, and then, like I said, it pumps it over to the Thames River. A number of years ago, we did a complete upgrade to the station, put in new pumps, uh, new controllers, and everything else. Um, when we did that, we put in um, three large pumps, handle most of the flow, and then what we call a jockey pump, which is a smaller pump that handles the lower flows. Like at nighttime, when there's very little flow coming to the station, 
it doesn't make much sense to run this big, huge pump. So we run the, sm the smaller one. Uh, we only have one of those. Um, we had always intended, we left a space to add an, an additional small jockey pump. So that we have a redundant pump in case one of them breaks down um, or the other thing we can do, we can alternate the use. So one can pump for a few hours and take a break and the other one can pump. So it kind of extends the life of the pump. Um, so we're looking at 350,000 to purchase and install this second jockey pump at the station. Um, second project is um, the uh, sterilization uh, process we use now is with uh, chlorine. So when the treated sewage gets to the, before it gets pumped over to the James River, the last thing it does, it goes through a, what they call chlorine contact tank and it adds chlorine bleach to kill all the bacteria and stuff. Um, you know, the, because of just the nature of chlorine, I mean, it really eats away at the pumps, the piping. Um, it's getting very expensive to purchase. Uh, we have to store it on site. The tanks that we store it in there need to be replaced. Um, and it's just, you know, it's, it's an issue for our employees to handle this, you know, for safety reasons. So what uh, a lot of plants are doing and what we're looking at doing is going to a UV disinfection process where we take the chlorine out of the equation and in the chlorine tanks where the sewage goes through, we actually put in UV light bulbs. Um, and that essentially does the same thing. The only maintenance on them is you got to replace a bulb once in a while or clean them. Um, the only downside to this process is the electricity costs are higher because you're running these light bulbs all the time. But you know, the council's asked us to look and we can look into you know potentially solar panels or some other things to you know, kind of offset the electrical increases. We did have a study done, um, and you know the cost for electricity is you know it's about equal to what we'll save in the uh, chemical costs. So it's kind of an even swap. And it's a lot safer, certainly for the employees. So this funding for it's actually just for design is. Uh, in the permit, it's 150,000. Okay, if there's no further discussion. So, okay, so next year, the 750K would be to actually perform the work. Correct. That's what we're estimating. Yeah, that, I mean, that's kind of a placeholder and kind of our estimate. I mean, that could go up, could go down. But yeah, you're right. That 750 is for construction. Does VFD mean? Uh, variable frequency drive. So a pump instead of just slamming on or off, it, it kind of ramps up slowly or then adjusts to what the most optimum speed it needs to for the flows. And does the UV sterilization cause any delay? Like, is it any slower than the chlorine? Will the water still be pumping the same rate? Still the same rate, yeah. Is the UV sterilization used a lot in other towns or? Yeah, we see okay. more and more plants going to it. If there's any further, no further discussion, uh, I'll call for a vote on approving $500,000 for CIP uh, 10C. All those Aye. in favor? Aye. Aye. Three, zero, zero. We're on the mark. Okay. But back to little numbers. They're just smaller. Yeah, they're smaller <laughs> than I, can't read. <laughs> I don't think they're much smaller. Oh, no, not number wise, just yeah. cranks. Yes. Smaller cranks. Yeah, don't make the print any smaller. I'm having difficulty <laughs> now. <laughs> Where do we get the bigger font needs to be? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why we still have this. Looks like, you know, like a dot matrix printer type. What have I got? 
Oh, I'll go back a few pages. Okay, here we go. Okay. Account 2020. And I believe the number is 9743547 dollars. Correct. Okay, let me get that down here. Seven. Motion to approve that number. On page 115. I'll make a motion. Okay. Second. I'll second. Uh, discussion. Okay. Um, this is the, our sewer operating budget. Um, again, this is completely paid for with the sewer user fees, 100%. Um, it is, you look at from last year, it's like almost 1.7 million over what we approved last year, which is a 20% increase. Um, the main reason for that is the CIPs because they were almost a million dollars from over from last year. Um, so that, that's, you know, that's Substantial. Right. Can you say that again? The, the CIPs, which we just reviewed. Um, last year, we had uh, 1.5 million. Mm -hmm. And this year, we just approved the 2.55 million. So that's included in this number? That's included in the, in the 9,700. Yeah, see, because the CIPs and the sewer are funded out of this account. Right. Um, not out of the capital reserve. Okay. So you were just approving the project before, and the number now, this is the funding source for it. I see. Can you show us where those projects are in our budget book? Yes, yeah, so on page 116, mm -hmm. the bottom line, 5460, yeah. it says reserve fund equipment. Those are our CIPs. Those are CIPs. Yeah. So if the the sewer rates are only going up a small amount, yeah, will there a, be enough money to fund all this? Yeah, we have a pretty hefty fund balance in this account. We looked on the previous page 115. Is a and the financing plan down the um, there's you know the um, fund balance applied is so like 2.2 million dollars so that's what we currently have in the bank or yes actually probably have more than that but that's the amount we're applying applying and the the number above that is 6.979 million that's the amount of money we collect from the sewer user fees we applied the same we did from last year, assuming that there's going to be no increase. But if they do decide to increase it, whatever, you know, there'll be uh, potentially more fund balance next year. So why is there such a surplus in the in the in the account? I guess um, just they probably didn't use all the money that they needed from the sewer user. So they, you know, kind of builds up and it was building up over time. Uh -huh. And they were, they spent a little, uh, you know, the 1.5 last year, the year before may have been a little higher or even lower than that. Um, so they kind of were saving up for some of these larger projects. Okay. So the plan would be to use all of that money or. Uh, so point. 2.2 of that this year. Or 2.2 of the, sorry, 2.2 of the what? On balance. Which is not on here. Yeah, that's not okay. on here. I okay. do have that number somewhere. I don't know if I actually got that. 
But it, it's because it's a different, it's not the general fund. It's the right. fund gets to stay there. So you build it up over a period of time to do the different projects. Right. So I guess my question is, would there still be a surplus in that fund after this year? Yeah, and I do. Okay. I didn't bring that. It's. I want to say it's like 2.3, 2.4. Additional? Additional. No, that, that we have available. We're only using that much of it. And that that doesn't include the revenue or the funds you would bring in. 6.9. The reuse in charges is that 6.6 million 979. Right. Yeah. That's this year's, correct? Yes. But then we would also be getting that next year. Correct. I think we're asking two different questions here. There's six million nine hundred seventy-nine thousand dollars is FY twenty-four funds that you anticipate bringing in, correct? For the user fees. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's next year's user fees. This year's user fees estimated at the same amount. Okay. Unless the rate changes. Okay. Because we're not like adding come to customers, so it doesn't really change too much year to year. Okay. Are those taxes and fees counts? Is there any further discussion? So, wait, just so I understand, so there the the fund balance applied is the two point two, right? But that's not the entire fund balance. Correct. Okay, that makes sense. Any further discussion? If there's no further discussion, uh, I'll call for a vote to approve of $9,743,547. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three, zero, zero. Okay. DIP, uh, no, no, we're on uh, 2030 Solid Waste Fund. That is 119. Actually, one. Okay, I have a number of one million five hundred ninety-eight thousand fifty-eight dollars. I have a motion to approve that number. I'll make a motion to approve that number. Gary. Second. Second. You're muted. Second. I'll second. Yeah. Okay, that's one million five nine eight four five eight. Any discussion? Well, let's do some. So, um, basically, this is the solid waste fund to cover the tipping fee for the waste that is hauled to um, the Lisbon incinerator. So the um, the town is part of SCARA, and SCARA's rate for the tipping fee is um, going up to $61.25 a ton. So basically, um, the private haulers within the town provide a bond so that they can use the facility at this rate and we send out monthly bills to them. So it's just a pass through. In other words, the, the private haulers um, 
we get charged by scare, right? The 6125. The town gets town gets charged, but and then but we get reimbursed by the private haulers. Correct. Yes. And if you were if they were to go to Lisbon, say on the open market, it would probably be over a hundred dollars a ton. But they just bring the rotten waste and declare it as rotten waste. So that's two dollars. It's going up two dollars a ton, which is more than a uh, three percent. Three point one. It's yeah. There's another like one up. Yeah. So the um. Yeah, you know, the cost for doing the audit went from like seven thousand to like twenty eight thousand. Line two zero three zero zero. Yeah. Explain that line. So that's a that's just a price for doing the audit, and the price is given to us by finance. So. Um, you don't have any control of that. No, fortunately. Okay, so those are the two cost increases. Yes. Funding, the financing plan with the miscellaneous unclassified $20,000. Um, that could be um, revenue from um, various things that might come back in from from SCARA. So, I guess my main question is: Is any of this taxpayer dollars? No. Okay. So even the fund balance is fund balance for this account, right? Separate. Thank you. Essentially, you just act as a broker, take your money from them, give it to them. That's okay. all we do. Okay. Simple terms. That's all okay. I understand <laughs> it. I Good with that. Is there any further discussion? If not, I'll call for a motion to approve one million five hundred ninety-eight thousand dollars, five hundred ninety-eight thousand fifty-eight dollars. Aye. Yes, I. Three in favor. Zero, zero. Okay. Uh, I guess we're at six zero four zero fleet reserve. I don't think I missed anything. Six zero four zero one twenty three. Uh, I have a number of one million six hundred and eighty thousand six hundred and forty one dollars. I have a motion to approve that number. Make a motion to approve the number. Second. Any discussion? Uh, I'll give you a brief overview on this one because this is all fun, fun for discussion. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, there's three components that make up this budget. Um, it is a you know, percentage wise, it's a fairly large increase over last year. I think it's 28, almost 20 percent. Um, the first, I, you know, part that makes up this budget is the vehicle maintenance, which is all the parts we use to, to maintain the fleet. And I think we have like over 200 vehicles. Um, the, just the rising price of parts, it's like a $28,000 increase that we've estimated for parts alone. Um, vehicle fuel is the other component. Um, you know, we lock in at a, at a certain rate through a consortium with other towns and board of education. Um, for gas for this coming year, we've locked in at 297, which is you know about a 20 cents a gallon increase from last year. 
and the diesel was 321, but that's about a 55, 55 cent increase from last year. So overall, but with the amount of fuel that we use, it's about a $30,000 increase right there. Um, and the third and final thing is the uh, new vehicle replacements. Um, we've identified eight new vehicles for this year um, and the total price for those is $807,500. Um, that represents most of the increase, which is like a $300,000 increase from last year. Um, so I'll go through the, the eight vehicles now. Um, we have four new police cars. Um, we're replacing 2017 Ford Explorers that will be having close to 150,000 miles by the time they get replaced, um, which is a lot for a police car. Um, the cost of those are $50,000 each. So that's 200,000 for those. Um, the next one is a 2008 International Five Yard Plow Truck. These are our standard plow trucks that you see um, doing most of the town roads. Um, this one is the last one with a steel body that holds the salt and that thing is rusted out and the chassis is all rusted out on it. So we're looking at a new truck um, with a stainless steel body like all the other ones have. Um, these are rather pricey at 265,000, but that's you know all outfitted with the, you know, it's got the spreader and the plow and the lights and all the uh, stuff on it. Um, the next one is a 28 passenger bus for the uh, senior center. Um, one that they have now, it's got like 130 something thousand miles on it. It's a 2008 Chevrolet. Uh, this one will be submitting for a federal grant to pay for 80% of it. The price of that is $75,000. Um, the next one is a Ford or 2012 Ford F-350. It's a pickup truck with a plow that we use for some of the smaller side streets, as well as our day-to-day -day operations. Um, this one's just due for, due for replacement. It also has extensive chassis rust on it. And the price of that is $57,500. And then the last piece of equipment that we're looking to purchase is, is, is new. It's not a replacement piece, but we're looking to get in a, a mid-sized tractor um, with a hydraulic boom arm and a flail mower, which is a big mower head on it to do our roadside maintenance. I mean, currently we're using these little machines and weed, you know, guys with weed whackers and everything else. And we just can't keep up with the um, with keeping the brush back for sight lines and clearing sidewalks and roads and stuff. And, you know, a number of years ago, we used to use Roundup, but the town council said no more Roundup. So the stuff that we had killed with the Roundup got, got through a couple of years before it all grew back, but now it's coming back with a vengeance. So, um, you know, this piece of equipment is really going to allow us to, you know, hit all the roads like we should be doing. And also we could in the future get uh, maybe a brush hard or a different uh, type of mowing deck in the back and do like the landfill, like at Flanders Road, we have to cut up there every, a few times a year. Uh, the price of this, the tractor plus the, the boom arm and the flail mower is 210,000. So those eight vehicles total up to the $807,500. Flail arm. Flail mower. Flail head, I guess. The type of blade that spins around. It's got like these little teeth on these little chains. So if it hits like a rock, it doesn't blow up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so using the new tractor would involve more uh, personnel. I mean, it would just, it's just a replacement. Yeah, what for they the use way what you they, currently. Currently is down. what they call a trackless, which is like a little tiny. Piece of equipment does have a mower head on, but it can't really reach and push the brush back as like we'd like to. It's a lot slower. So yeah. this, it, it's not a, an increase in personnel to operate this. It's just okay. a different piece of equipment. Okay. And then the bus. What what's the likelihood of the federal grant going through for that? Um, I know we've gotten them in the past. I mean, so pretty, we pretty much get the federal grant every okay. year. Problem is availability of the vehicles. We we got the federal grant for the year we're in now. 
we've been waiting eight months for Ford to build the chassis. Really? But I mean, the money's locked in. And Mary Jo at the Senior Center writes the grants. She gets it every year. We've got it. Well, every year we've applied for it for the past eight years or so. We've got that. So you're already getting a vehicle then? Well, or? the one we're getting is for the senior center. This is another one that's a dual purpose vehicle for recreation and the senior center. Oh, I see. Okay. And is and that the cost of that is included in the budget, but if the grant goes through, it'll yeah, the grant require the grant pays eighty percent of the cost of the vehicle, but that's one of the stipulations of the grant. You have to fully fund it in your budget. Initially, okay. It's a reimbursement type of grant. I see. Well, Chuck, does that get used for anything else? They do use it for like construction. If they're doing drainage and stuff, they'll take the plow off and the spreader out of the back. Use it for hauling stuff, yes. What do you do with? Say you buy new four police patrol cars. What do you do with the old ones? The old ones we end up actually trading in. So you um, get they, some money. They'll go to them. like a taxi company or something. Huh. Some depending on the vehicle that we trade in. Now these vehicles are well, well over a hundred something thousand miles on it, so they're pretty beat up. We'll probably get five six hundred dollars a vehicle oh, on them. Okay. But if you think of a police car, it's not like a regular passenger car. By the time they take out the center console and a prisoner cage and everything, it's really just a driver's seat and the whole rest of it's just vinyl floor kind of thing. <laughs> so it's not years ago they would give us the seats and the door panels and because it, again when you think about it, it's all the back of it's all prisoner cage. It's not passenger you know sure. rated you don't want a guy grabbing a thing or kicking a window out so it's it's really when you take all the police stuff out of it it's a stripped down vehicle it's not very attractive <laughs> at all i think fifty thousand for a brand new vehicle and they're fully equipped when they come yeah see that's that part of the problem with with these newer vehicles is ford keeps changing the body style we were were blessed years ago when it was just a crown victoria you know for 10 years it was a crown victoria you took the cage out you put the cage in everything fit well ford now every two or three years is redesigning the vehicle to make it fancier and snazzier and the and the parts don't fit anymore so you have to get all new cages you have to get all new light bars you have to get all new center consoles because the old ones don't fit once they begin to standardize again if they do um then we'll be able to cost will come down considerably because the vehicle itself is only 28 to thirty thousand dollars it's the prisoner cage it's the trunk boxes it's the center consoles the radios the light bars that's what drives the cost on these i know that uh there's some assumption shall we say about last year there was four vehicles requested is this an additional four that more or less rounds this out is, the fleet this is an additional four and this is another one of those supply chain issues where those four vehicles that we purchased last year are still sitting at the upfitter waiting to be delivered to us because they're so the old ones are just they can't get going on and on well <laughs> the old vehicles have been traded in already and stripped yeah. pieces off that we could so they're actually down a few vehicles waiting for these four to get online and I've I've spoken with the police and I've spoken with the supplier to you know show me what you need we'll make it we'll manufacture it you know go with a different vendor so we're trying to get the cars as quick as we can so the sooner we buy the better off we are actually yeah. even though we'll have to wait we're still waiting and we're guaranteed a delivery yeah yeah the vehicles are here they're lettered they're on the ground. They're ready to go. We're just waiting for trunk box mounts or center console piece to make everything secure inside there. And I think the way they're all wearing out that there is a justification for eight vehicles overall. Yeah. Okay. I have in my notes um, from the town council meeting maintain three Groton Long Point police vehicles. Is that correct? That is. That is correct. Um, and we're bringing their cars over to the Ford you know, these lines for oil changes, mm -hmm. air rotation, you know, normal. And so the chief called me up and said, can you guys, you know, 
So you know, I talked to John and he said, yeah, we can do that. So they bring them up to us now. We maintain their vehicles for them. You know, they reimburse us for time and parts and material and stuff. Yeah, they don't put a lot of miles on them. It's only three cars, so it was something we were able to take care of with little or no impact to our operation. Is the overall load finally leveled out, more or less, the workload for maintenance? The workload is just getting more technical. You know, every car that comes in is just more technical. It's everything's driven by computer. You know, it's not the old days of, you know, the it's all check engine lights. It's all, you know, so, so the work is, uh, we still have as much work. It's just a different type of work. You know, it's, it's less physical wrench in your hand and more a meter in your hand or a computer or a laptop to diagnose the vehicles. I can see that coming down the road too, but that's, that's the way it's going. Even the, yeah. even the big plow trucks now are all, all that, computer. That's driven. what I understand is there's a lot more technology in them. Yeah, they they run, uh, so our our big plow trucks run what we call an all season body. And that body has a big flap in the back that can fold down and it's a regular dump truck. It just dumps, does what you'd normally think a dump truck would do. In the winter time, you fold the flap up and there's a conveyor chain inside there and the dump body, instead of dumping front to back dumps sideways. So it continues to bring the material over the conveyor chain. Well, our, our trucks now have, um, as, a, as a material saving device, they have what we call ground speed controls. So the vehicle electronically knows how fast it's going and adjusts the speed of that auger to distribute the correct amount of salt on the road. So if you're going really slow, it slows that chain down. You come to a stop sign, it stops. And you go and take off and you go faster, like down this road, the chain will speed up. So you continually put a consistent amount of salt down all the time. So those trucks are used year round. And also the other point is with this all season body, this would be stainless steel. So we've had very good luck when this truck wears out, we'll take this body off and actually put it on another truck. We won't have to buy a whole new truck. We'll just have to buy the chassis because this this body will stay intact. And we're we're looking at two to three chuck changes on one body with these. Whereas the steel ones are, you gotta throw them away. <laughs> so we are looking at eight proposed vehicles this year. If I look at page 127, can you walk me through how many of these are going to need to be replaced next year and the next year? And it's we're hoping to get somewhere in that five to 800,000 a year. The problem is we never get to the, the staff type vehicles, you know, mm -hmm. because I mean, you look at this list, these are all operation and maintenance vehicles. So I can't in good conscience replace, you know, John Reiner had asked for new vehicles, but how, how can I give him a new, replaces a skate that's eight to 10 years old with 60,000 miles on it. When I have police cars with 100,000 miles, uh, you know, a plow pickup truck with over 100,000 miles, you know, you, we just never seem to be able to get to those type vehicles. So next year we'll be in the same boat. These eight will be a little bit off, but there'll be a few others, you know, police cars and on the plow truck, you know, um, parks want some new mowers, you know, those things will, jump in front of some of these vehicles. And some of them we've just deemed will we'll probably never replace. Like there's an old um, John Deere excavator up here. That, that vehicle will never be vehicle. replaced. <laughs> yeah. We've rebuilt it once, you know, we may have to do it again, but I, I don't know if we'll ever catch up with this list. You never do, because new year is a new year. Um, can I ask that next year you put how many miles they have on? On this sure. list, approximate. It just gives us an idea of you know kind of where we're at with some of these. So you could have a 2017 with 50,000 miles. You could have a 2017 with 200,000 miles. Right. Thank you. I appreciate this list a lot. It helps. I'm uh, curious. Are there any electric vehicles on the horizon? 
again, that's one of the things that I always try to get to. I actually brought my report this time. Um, we have um, 13 hybrid vehicles right now. And the majority of those hybrids are gas electric. They're escapes, Priuses. We, uh, planning does have one Nissan LEAF. And um, uh, we talk about that all the time, that the council would like to see more hybrid vehicles, more energy efficient vehicles, but that's just one of the things that we never seem to be able to get down to. Yeah, um, really going to be more of the admin type vehicles are going to be electric. You know, we're certainly not going to have police cars uh, or plow trucks that are electric. Uh, yeah. Don't you get into you know, a couple of these admin vehicles, you know, once they get up in the high mileages, we'll start bringing electric vehicles in there. Yeah. And uh, I've ran a little report on these before, but out of the 13 vehicles, we've saved about 31,000 gallons of uh, gas by running the hybrid or electric that that otherwise would be getting a 13 to 15 mile an hour mile gallon car. And now it's getting a, you know, 35, 40 mile gallon car. So we'd love to get to them. We just never seem to be able to be able to justify them on this list. Those are the cars where the gas um, charges the battery, right? I mean, you're not plugging them in. Uh, the um, Nissan Leaf is a plug-in oh, vehicle. Okay. Yep, there's no engine in that at all. That's a straight plug-in. All the rest of them are are gas electric. Yeah. We couldn't really afford straight electric at this point, anyways, could we? Well, the prices are getting a lot lower, and unfortunately, there's no grants out for these either. All of the grants for energy efficient vehicles are either requiring that you replace your vehicle sooner than you normally would. I mean, they're not going to they're not going to just pay you to buy a new gas mm -hmm. electric vehicle. You, they has to be some give and take. So there's money there to like say we had a, a four year old plow truck. They'd let us replace that one and fund that one. But who's going to replace a four year old plow truck when we have 10 year old plow trucks that we have to replace? And there also there's money out there for engine swaps. Same thing. If you want to take an old, well, not old, they won't pay for that. But again, a, a five, six year old engine and put a new clean burning engine and they'll give you money for that. But they're not going to give you money if that vehicle's 13, 15 years old because they know you're going to replace that anyways. Yeah, there's money out there for EV charging stations, but not the vehicles. There was a period of time that we were able to get this congestion mitigation grant that the government would pay the difference between, say, a Ford Escape regular vehicle and a Ford Escape hybrid they would pay the difference of those vehicles to encourage you to go the hybrid route. I feel like vehicles always are like the easy thing to say, we're gonna not fund these, um, but like this list shows not funding it just means another vehicle that needs to be replaced later on <laughs> and it doesn't go away. So I think to be good stewards for the town, we do need to do a little bit at a time and I appreciate your list of years ago. Priorities. There was a fleet fund. There was a planned replacement strategy and departments paid for their vehicle. They paid for their fuel. They paid for their maintenance. And then uh, say a vehicle, we would set a life cycle for that vehicle and say it was 10 years old. After 10 years, they had essentially paid into the fund that 10 years and it would be time to get your new vehicle. But when tough times hit, that became the easy thing to start to say, let's get away from that. Let's get away from that. That's why if you look on the column, you see the year's balance. I mean, that's all based on the plan of when they were supposed to be replaced. And, and they're all in the negatives. Yes. <laughs> I have well, I have um, just about as many vehicles that need to be replaced that I have, don't need to be replaced. We're, we're about tip that scale. Yeah. I keep falling back on the thoughts of the difference between maintenance and repair. And rule of thumb is the longer you apply the maintenance, you're going to come to a point of you have to repair, which is probably three times the cost of the maintenance. And a whole different picture. Whereas you change the engine oil, you wear the engine out, and now you've got to repair or replace the engine. And that's if you can get it, 
That's the problem now is what I understand is if you can get replacement parts. We've, we've been very fortunate in that aspect. The problem is you're paying more for them because nobody's stocking them. Everything has to be special ordered and you're paying freight and you're paying those other things. And that's what's really driving our parts costs up. Are you paying the interest that they're borrowing money to put the parts on their shelf too? It's not a free ride anymore. <laughs> okay. Is there any further discussion on uh, fleet reserve fund? If not, I'll call for a vote on the figure of one million six hundred and eighty thousand six hundred and forty one dollars. Aye. Aye. Three in favor. Zero. Zero. Uh, I guess that's it. Yep. Okay. okay. Good job. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay. Passed. Uh, Equally.